Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello, welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast, the podcast where we have digital discussions, the worlds of sports, social media, pop culture, everything really depending on the guest. We talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Peter Miliotis. On Twitter, you know me as Petey Beats. My guest is his third time on the show. He's becoming a regular on, on Pop Turnative. Uh, he is a winner of a gold medal at the World Junior Hockey Championship that took place in the Czech Republic for Team Canada. He's an Ottawa Senators prospect, and he's playing for the University of North Dakota right now. Jacob Bernard Docker is back for a three-peat. Jacob, welcome back to the show, and congrats on the gold medal, man. Thanks. I appreciate it. So, um, I mean, that tournament was everything everyone thought it was going to be. It was intense. It was quick. It was emotional. Was it everything you thought it was going to be as well? Yeah, for sure. I think everything a little bit more, obviously, going to it, um, you know, expecting a lot. And I think it, it kind of just exceeded all my expectations. And, uh, you know, you go in for one goal in mind, and that is the gold medal. And I think you have something you want to show the uh, my audience right now. And what was kind of going through your mind when you were given that? Like, did it sink? It didn't. It, I'm sure it didn't sink into all of you when that happened. Yeah, I think you're you're just in the moment. You're enjoying it as much as you can. I think uh, it's one of those things. Or even now, I look back on it, it just kind of feels still surreal. So, um, something I'll definitely never forget in the experience of a lifetime. Uh, so, you know, a teammate of yours in North Dakota, Shane Pinto, he came on the show and. Uh, he, you know, told me about a situation where on Boxing Day when Canada played the USA. I mean, first off, I mean, you're playing your teammate that you kind of see every day, and then all of a sudden he's your rival. Was that kind of weird off the top, uh, like right off the get go? Yeah, it was pretty funny seeing him <laughs> in, uh, in a different color jersey, but um, you know, for the two of us, it was uh, pretty memorable, and um, you know, something we're going to talk about for a long time. So it was pretty cool. Can you confirm or deny that? At one point, you're going to a face-off, and you attempted to chirp him. At one point during the game, is that is that true? Oh, I don't know if I chirped him. I might have said something. <laughs> he's... I, wasn't, I, I wasn't chirping. <laughs> he said that you were chirping him, and he, he's like, "You shouldn't chirp me because it wasn't a good chirp." So <laughs> he told me to ask you about that because he came on and talked about that. <laughs> There's even yeah. a clip if you go on our Facebook or Instagram. So I don't know if you want to kind of, if you want to kind of defend yourself right now, but he said that. <laughs> uh, I forget what I said. I don't think I said anything to, to try and get under his skin. Just something. Absolutely. A little friendly. A little friendly comment. No, for sure. You're going into a tournament where it's the best under 20 players in the world. You're playing against players that you know or might not know. What were some takeaways for Jacob Bernard Docker besides kind of winning the gold medal? What were some takeaways that you could take to your game the rest of the University of North Dakota? Yeah, I think just playing against some some really skilled players, obviously the best in the world, was um, just one of those things where you're going to learn a lot playing against those guys and um, you know, you're not going to be perfect throughout the whole tournament because you're playing against the best players in the world. So, um, just learning how to, I guess, for me, it was one of those things where my gap control was, was a pretty big deal and um, playing against guys that had a lot of speed and skill. What was kind of going through your head in two moments of the game when Barrett Hayden tied it up and then when Akil Thomas scored? <laughs> both those both those two moments, you know, you saw the bench and the players on the ice on Team Canada, like, erupt and go crazy. What was going through your mind that the moment that happened? Yeah, just pure joy, I guess. I mean, uh, obviously we're down 3-1, and I think, um, you know, we all knew we had it in us to come back, but, uh, you know, it wasn't going to be easy, and those guys obviously came out big for us and um, scored a few huge, huge goals. So, um, yeah, just jumping up and down on the bench was, was, pretty, was pretty cool. The world is watching. The Ottawa Senators are also watching. Does that kind of kind of – how do you – kind of deal with that as a day by day of the tournament where you know you know that Pierre Dorian is watching this tournament and um you know they've been watching you all year in North Dakota but they really want to see you in this tournament what was that kind of like yeah I mean it's one of those things maybe you think about it for a second then you, you go right back to um you know you've been training your whole life for this this opportunity and you, you try to to block out as much outside noise as you can. And, um, you know, obviously you want to perform and, and look good for, for yourself. But, 
I think more importantly, you're playing for Team Canada. You're just trying to represent, um, you know, your country as best you can. Another thing, did it ever sink in how many Canadian fans, like, came down to Ostrava to kind of see you guys play? That's wild, man. It, it was wild, I think. I mean, there, I've never seen anything like it. Um, you know, I expected to, you know, to maybe see a few Canadians here and there, but to have 3,000 of them down there, you know, it felt like a home crowd to us. You know, when I had you on, you know, the show the first time, you talked about some accomplishments and what kind of the best things that happened in your hockey career thus far. This moment, winning the gold medal, this moment is going to live, like, a, a long time for you as probably your best hockey, like, career moment, like, of all time for Jacob Bernard Docker. Is that is that safe to say? Yeah, I, I think it's definitely, it's, uh, you know, it's an accomplishment, accomplishment that, um, you know, it's pretty hard to beat, so. Um, I mean, up to this point in my life, definitely the number one, um, no kind of moment slash accomplishment that I've had, um, in my hockey career. So, uh, pretty special. Focusing back to, you know, some, some college hockey talk, uh, kind of keep us up to date with what's going on with, uh, the fighting Sioux right now. How's, how's, uh, how's the second half of the season been going so far for you guys? Yeah, we're, uh, I mean, we're, we're still doing pretty well. We're. Um, you know, right now we're, I think we're number one in the nation, but I think, you know, we faced a bit of, a bit of adversity so far in the second half. We've, um, you know, I think the first half we only lost one game and we've lost already two in the second half, but I think it's one of those things where it's kind of good for us to, to face some, some adversity and, and play some, some good hockey and um, obviously learn from some, learn from some losses here. So what do the veteran players, the players that have been around those situations say to kind of the younger players, like with a situation where you're a team that's, you know, best in the nation at the time, how do you kind of, you know, help the younger guys that might not be, you know, used to a situation like that? Cause you know, there's going to be a lot of confidence. There's going to be a lot of emotion in the air, but it's got to be kind of like, uh, you, you have to kind of contain it as well. Right, Jacob? Yeah, for sure. I think uh, you know, I think we're all going going through it together as a team here. I don't think it's kind of the older guys and younger guys. We're all kind of experiencing it for the first time. Um, obviously, we're a pretty confident group right now, being where we are. But I think uh, you know we're trying to come to the rink every day with a mindset that um, we're right back to zero, and um, you know every day is a new day to get better. And um, you know at the end of the day, we're we're doing well well right now, but you know we haven't really accomplished anything yet. So um, just a lot a lot more. Um, and, and bigger accomplishments, um, you know, on our mind. Do you think there's um, an opportunity to see the, you know, when players like yourself or Shane Pinto or, you know, Cole Caulfield, those players play for, they go to this tournament, the World Juniors, and maybe people don't know about college hockey, but then you see these these performances and, you know, you win the gold medal. Do you see that the World Juniors kind of helping NCAA in exposure not that NCAA hockey needs exposure because I feel like with the Frozen Four everyone's watching it every year regardless but does it give that little boost have you thought about that at all yeah not really I think um obviously there's those guys the guys at that tournament obviously go a lot of different routes and I think um you know everyone there is is there for a reason at the end of the day you know guys individually pick what what's going to get them there the best and um, you know, I think NCAA, um, you know, CHL, whatever, whatever route guys choose to take is, um, you know, kind of a personal decision. And, um, you know, for me, it's the NCAA route has, you know, obviously been the way to go. Absolutely. Any funny stories or any kind of funny encounters with fans or staff or teammates? Anything cool to share kind of behind the scenes of the tournament that happened? Did you guys have, like, a funny dinner out? Did anything, anything, any cool stories from like a behind the scenes aspect that you could share with us? Um, I don't know if I can recall really one story. I think it's pretty cool just on the streets of, um, you know, Strava there. Sometimes you're just going to a team walk and you see people with Canadian jerseys and, um, just crazy to see that you're all the way out there and, and you're running into your own fans was, was really cool for me. You mentioned team walks. Was that something that, you know, Dale Hunter and the team wanted to kind of make sure to happen, like, right away, even with the selection camp process, the team bonding? Was that something that was kind of um, emphasized from day one with all of you players? Yeah, for sure. And I think, uh, you know, it's definitely emphasized on, you know, whenever we had a day off and we weren't on the ice, we uh, still wanted to be building as a team and um, would do a lot of team activities, whether that was walk or, you know, kind of player-only dinners. 
um, just stuff like that to, to get us closer as a group. Two prolific players and teammates of yours for the gold medal team, you know, Alexi, La, Alexi Lafreniere and Barrett Hayton, two players that, you know, had a lot of eyes on them before the tournament and really delivered. Both got injured at one point in the tournament and stayed. Talk a little bit about those two players and how important they were and talk a little bit about, you know, their impact coming back from the injuries. Like It was like, it was almost like they came back and it was like they even... Had, they were even more hungrier because they knew they weren't out of the tournament, right? It was pretty crazy to see. Yeah, for sure. They definitely, obviously, both had, had great tournaments for us and um, were huge reasons that we were able to, to come out with that gold medal. And I think just pretty impressive when you got, you know, players of that caliber and the skill that those two have. And, um, you know, when they're willing to battle through injury to, to represent their country was, was really special to see. No, absolutely. Um, what do you think... You mentioned, you know, the takeaways. What were some things from the international, like the big ice, that you maybe weren't used to that you kind of noticed? Was it a lot harder than you thought to play on the big ice? Or was it? did you get used to it game by game? How was that like? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, game by game, you definitely do get more comfortable. I think it's one of those things where a lot of guys have played on with the guys throughout their career somewhere. So it's, um, you know, still a game of hockey, but obviously a little bit more, um, time and space and, and some you have to adjust to is I guess a D man even more be trying to be inside the dots and stuff like that and um you know not getting caught outside with, with fast forwards. So uh, a bit of an adjustment but something that uh you know comes pretty easily. Absolutely. And last question, what's next for Jacob Bernard Docker as we start twenty twenty? What do you kind of what's on the mind right now? Obviously, you know, a championship, of course, another championship, but you know, what's what are some of the goals moving forward? Yeah, I mean, obviously, as much hardware as, um, <laughs> uh, you know, as we can in North Dakota, I think that's, you know, that's our team goal is, you know, we want to we wanna win our regular season, um, our league and um, the Penrose. So that's the first goal. But I think from there, it's just, um, you know, building as a team. And obviously, we don't, we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. We, we haven't won anything yet. So uh, we're having a good season, but it's just about, um, you know, keeping that going. Absolutely. Well, first of all, congrats to you and Team Canada on the gold medal performance. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And if Shane Pinto chirps you, let me know. All right. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks a lot for doing this. Do, do, do me a favor. Just hold that gold medal uh, as we sign off here. Yeah, no problem. Perfect. Well, this has been Pop Turnative, youtube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. And until next time, this is... World Junior Hockey Championship gold medalist Jacob Bernard Docker and Petey Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.